Hi folks, Matt Allington here. Today in my video and blog, I'm going to show you how to create these Six Sigma control limit charts. You can see here that uh, these columns in this chart represent variations. In this case, it's sales. And when you change the slicer, you can see that I have an upper and lower control limit. And I've got a nice color variation here showing me the portion of the column above and below these control limits. I've also got one here just using a, a line chart. So I'm going to show you how to build this using DAX and Power BI. Okay, so let's get started. So here I have the AdventureWorks database. Um, many of you that have followed the work that I do would know that I use the AdventureWorks database. So we have um, four lookup tables here. And a sales table if we go and have a look at the sales table it contains line level transactions so on any given date there are many transactions and the total value of the transactions are in this extended amount column okay so i'm going to start off with this chart that i have here on the screen uh, this is a total sales measure so let's have a look at the measure you can see here total sales is just the sum of the extended amount column. And, um, and so I've, I have put a filter here on 2002 and I can just come in here and select whatever period that I want. Now, normally with Six Sigma, you might be doing some sort of process control measurement here where you'd be taking data points and then plotting them on a chart. I'm just using AdventureWorks for convenience because that's the data that I have. Okay, so the first thing I want to know is I need a mean. I need a an average line going through the middle of this. Now, if I go to do a new measure and I'm just right, say, perhaps what you might think is the starting average. Let me go average sales. And you might start off by just saying average of the extended amount column. So let me create that measure and I'll put it into the chart and you can see that uh, there's a couple of things it's actually um, a very spiky uh, line so it's not a straight line as I was after um, and the numbers are way too small and so uh, there's a few issues here but one of the issues um, is that the data is actually filtered by day and the easiest way to see that is to switch perhaps back to a matrix and so actually looking at the data, you can see that on this particular day, there was 15,000 of total sales. But this average is actually the average of the transactions, not the average of the total sales for the day. So one issue we have to address is to make this average not of the individual transactions, but of the aggregate sales for the day. Okay, so what I need to do to fix this average formula is I need to change it from being an average of the individual line values to being an average for the day. And so I'm going to change this to an average X formula. And I'm going to step through the calendar table one row at a time. And for each row in the calendar table, I'm going to calculate what the total sales is. And that will give me the daily average um, for each sale. So you can see now that over the total period, the average is 12,000. But in fact, I'm getting the individual numbers here, and this is not what I want. I actually need this 12,000 to appear everywhere down here. Now let me switch back to the line chart to demonstrate the point. And so you can see that the average and the actual are completely the same at the moment. So I need to make another change. And what I need to do is I need to remove the day level filter before I do the calculation. So that will be using calculate. And I need to remove the filter. So I'm going to say all calendar. And that will remove all the day level filters before I do the calculation. And that will give me an average line. So now I am getting an average line. But clearly it's not correct. Uh, let me jump back here again to the matrix you can see that the average is way above these numbers here. And that's because the formula that I wrote is removing all filters from the calendar table, including the filters here on the page and including the filters here on the slicer. And so what I actually need to do is I need to keep the filters on the slicer. So I'm going to say all selected. And all selected will remove the filters from here, but it will leave the filters coming from the slicer. So let's have a look at that. That looks a bit more reasonable. And if I switch back to a line chart, now you can see that I've got a nice average line showing on the chart. 
and as I change the period the average line recalculates so it's a completely dynamic chart. Okay so the next thing I need to do is to calculate the standard deviation of this data. Uh, so this is not going to be a statistics lesson, I'm just going to show you how to create a standard deviation uh, using DAX. Now I actually need to follow the same type of pattern that I did with the average sales. So rather than reinvent the wheel here, I'm going to copy this formula and I'll create a new measure. And this will be my standard deviation. And this all selected I need to keep because this is basically working as planned and I need to also um, write a formula here so I could select standard deviation P but standard deviation P requires me to pass a column name so if I was trying to find the standard deviation of the extended amount then I could use this formula so let me show you what that does and I'll put it into my chart and you can see that uh, it's working, it's giving me a standard deviation. The, it's a flat line all the way through the selected period because of my all selected function that I wrote. But once again, the issue here is that this is the standard deviation of the individual line values. It's not the standard deviation of the daily average values. And so I need to once again use an X function and there is a standard deviation function here so if I go standard deviation X and because it's an X function it's an iterator I need to step through a table so I'm going to step through the calendar table one row at a time and for each row once again I'm going to extract the total sales and so that should be the correct modified standard deviation formula and so the, here's the standard deviation. This, this is one standard deviation based on the data that is on the chart at the moment. Okay, so now I've got my standard deviation. I need to produce my upper control limit and lower control limit. So I'm going to remove the standard deviation from the chart. And now I'm going to write, I'll start with my upper control limit. Now um, you can choose how to do this, um, but the way I'm going to write the upper control limit is the average of the sales plus a single standard deviation, so plus one standard deviation. If you wanted to do it two standard deviations, you could just do this or three standard deviations. In fact, you could even do a what if tool that would toggle between one, two, three standard deviations. For this exercise, I'm just going to use one standard deviation. So that's the upper control limit. So let me put that in the chart. And let me do a lower control limit. Of course, that would be the average sales minus one standard deviation. And let me put that on the chart. I'm going to change the line color. Don't particularly like that. So I'll come down here and I'll just put a I'll put a purple. Okay, so that's one way to build a control chart. What I'd like to do now is I'm going to switch this over to a combo chart. So I'm going to switch to a stacked and line combo chart. Just let me set this up the way I want it. I'm actually going to put all of these control lines as lines and I'm going to use my columns as the values. Now I just need to make some changes to the color again here so I'll come in here and I think I'll put my upper limit, lower limit, I need to change the average, I might just make that a black line. Okay I'm going to leave the bars yellow for now. Okay so what I wanted to do now is I want to make the sections of these bars shaded in different colors to highlight when they're above or below the control limits. So to do this, just to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to duplicate this and bring a second copy down below. Um, I'm going to change the height here. You can actually change the height of two objects together. You multi-select, control click. And if I come under formatting, come into general and I'll set the height as being 300. You can set them both at the same time. It's important they have them the same height because what I want to do is I want to use the bottom one as a reference 
to help me work through the changes that I'm about to make. Okay, so I just need to move that one up. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm now going to rebuild the column here into different pieces, different components, so that I can render them on the chart in different colors. Now, the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to start with the bottom section. So I'll write a new measure. I'll just call it lower. And I'll use an if statement. It's very similar to the way you would solve this problem in Excel. So let's think through the problem. If the total sales, or in other words, if the height of this column exceeds the LCL, so if, in other words, if total sales is greater than or equal to the lower control limit, then just give me the lower control limit. That's the height of the bottom portion of this column. Otherwise, or in other words, if it's less than, then I just need total sales. Okay, so that should give me the bottom portion and I'm going to remove total sales here and I'll bring lower in and this is the reason I've got two copies now because I can just quickly check and make sure I haven't made any mistakes. So you can see that this lower portion is rendering correctly. Okay, now the next step is to build the middle portion of this column. Now this one's a little bit trickier because we have to handle the piece that is above the LCL and a piece that's below the UCL. So we have to handle these pieces separately. So I'm going to start off just with the piece. So in other words, I'm going to take these bars here. So where total sales is greater than the LCL but less than the UCL, I just need to create that piece first. So let's do, and I'll call this middle. So I'm going to if statement. So if total sales is greater than LCL, and if it's also less than or equal to the upper limit, then what do I need? Well, I need the portion of total sales that is on top of the LCL. So this will just be total sales minus LCL. So that should just give me the incremental piece. Let's throw it in and have a look. And so you can see that this piece is now rendering correctly, but only for the bars that are below the UCL. So now what I need to do is to render the additional piece in case in, in the other case and so in other words when the total sales is greater than um, the UCL. So I believe the alternative will be so in the case where total sales is above the upper control limit I'll need the upper control limit minus the lower control limit so that should be UCL minus LCL and that should render um, a full bar. And you can see here, this one's very close, but let's take this one here. You can see there's a full bar that's been rendered. I still have to come back and render the top piece of the bar, of course. Now, there's actually a problem here I've just noticed. So notice how this bar is incorrect. So what I've done is I've used the alternate result being UCL minus LCL, but in fact, I only want to render that piece if total sales is greater than the LCL. So I might just nest another if statement there. If total sales is greater than the LCL, then we'll render that. Let's see whether that fixes the problem. Okay, great. That was a little bit too much uh, happening there. All right, so now we've got the middle section correct. Let's move on to the top section. So I'll just call this piece upper. And upper should simply be, I need another if statement. So if total sales is greater than the upper limit, then it's just simply total sales subtract the upper limit. And let's put that piece in and have a look. 
Okay, so now I've got the chart, exact chart that I've got down the bottom rendered at the top and I've got the different colors displaying to indicate what's above and below the line. I'm just going to quickly make some changes to the line colors just to give it some consistency here. So I will change the LCL. Let's make that blue. I'll change the UCL to be that same ready color. Um, maybe this average is a little bit too dark. Maybe I'll put something more like that. And um, now that I look at this, I actually would like to see these columns here that are shorter than the UCL to come out in a different color as well. So I actually need to change this lower bar so that it um, will have a different colored lower bar in the case that it, it falls short. So what I think I'll do is I'll rename this lower bar the full lower bar and I only want to return a value if total sales is a gr above the LCL, I'm going to remove this portion. In other words, in the case where the bar falls short of the line, I'm not going to render anything. So this is only the full lower bar. And now I'm going to create another measure to render the ones that fall short. And I might just copy this and I'll do a new measure and I'll call this the part lower bar and need to remove that and now if total sales is less than LCL then give me total sales let's have a look at that put that over here and that renders this piece now I need to come back and change these colors for the part lower bar and I'll make it that same sort of bluey color as there. So there we have it. It's a nice interactive chart. I can um, change the date period and all of these lines update automatically. Alternatively, if you prefer this type of chart, I can have a line chart like this and they will both interact automatically to show you the variations to your control points.